Hey everyone, today I have a video that is one of my favorite topics to talk about, which is the myths surrounding concentration and the present moment, which tends to keep so many human beings stuck in what I call the doom loop of trying to control something that you have no control over. All you can do is put yourself in situations to have somewhat of a better awareness of concentration, putting yourself in the situations to where maybe you're not multitasking, but any amount to force concentration is primarily outside of your control, regardless of what anyone tells you in social media, any major podcast, any researcher, it is not something you have control over, just like you don't have control over your thoughts. You could put yourself in the position to change your belief systems, which then your thoughts, images, sensation, urges, thoughts are only 25%. Thoughts, images, sensation, urges are a secondary byproduct of your rigid belief. So if you believe, if I don't concentrate, this is the worst thing ever. If I'm not present, I'm going to miss out on life then guess what's gonna happen? The sensations and urges of needing to multitask. Oh my God, why do I wanna multitask so bad? The urges of loss of concentration. It's not something you control on a moment to moment basis. And the more you try to force concentration, the, way you, the more you try to force mindfulness and, and meditation, which are not inherently bad, you're gonna set yourself up for some problems long-term. Before I go any further, please subscribe. Hit that like button down below. Let me know what you think. If you're stuck with OCD or any other problem of the sorts, please reach out again to phil at ocdrecovery.com. The webinars are almost 100 people every single time. When I first started doing them, 30 people in the webinar would be huge. Now we had, you know, we got an off webinar, not a big topic with 70 people. So they're growing. The community is amazing. We always appreciate the support. We're always coming from the perspective of people who have lived your journey. I have lived exactly what you're going through. 24-7 symptoms. I was in the mental hospital, didn't want to live anymore to where I am today to show you why there is hope and you can get better if you don't do these things. Okay, so you will never, ever hear me say, well, how do I focus on the present moment? This goes beyond sensory motor. A lot of sensory motor people struggle with this. It goes for anything. I don't not like being present. Well, you're going to have to get comfortable with not needing to be present and you're going to have to get comfortable with not being concentrated. There are many things that you do in life to where you're not present and you're not concentrated and you don't think about it whatsoever. Okay. An example, I'll use some basic examples I use in many of my calls to show people why it's not what you think. Let's say you're with a partner. Let's say you're married for five years. You have two children. They're seven and nine and you're having sex with your partner and you're thinking in the middle of sex, did I, did I cook them Will I have to cook them for dinner tomorrow? What, what crap? What was on the school, the school student schedule tomorrow? Do I have to go to a meeting? Is it bring your kid to work? Day? What, what is it? This stuff happens all the time, but you're not, unless you have a fear about it. Oh my God, I'm not concentrating during this moment. No. Think about something as simple as I'm on this right now. Remember how my, my chain was just sticking out? So I went like this as I was talking. I just lost concentration doing that. And I was no longer present in that video at that moment. It's not what people think. Everyone is convinced that the present moment is this magical, un uninterruptible, just like erotic, orgasmic, uh, like angels are coming down. No, that's not real. Do I have things like that? Yes. But again, because I'm putting myself in situations to allow it to happen, but I don't look for it. I have no expectations. The late Charlie Munger, who I respect greatly, was... Warren Buffett's business partner of Berkshire Hathaway, he died last year at 99. One of the number one life principles he talked about is no expectations, which is different than, than having goals. Having low expectations, this is coming from a man that was worth billions of dollars and was very successful. Expectations are the problem, not goals, and not even so much desires. If you look at Epicureanism and other Greco-Roman philosophies, even Stoicism, they talk about desires being a bad thing. I disagree with that. I think desires are actually extremely important. It's how you view that desire. I desire to have certain things in my career. I have goals for my career, but I have no expectations on needing to reach that desire. That's the difference. But without being trained in this type of pr pr these principles that we use at REBT and other aspects of Stoicism, people think desire automatically means I must have that. It does if your belief is bad about it. So at the present moment, if you have a desire to need to be present, I'm going to miss out on the birth of my child. I'm not going to be present at the football game or the soccer game. I'm not going to be able to go on the holiday somewhere and, and be focused. If those are your desires and you expect those things to happen, 
you will more than likely have no concentration at the level that you're looking for in presenteeism. The, re the way I get into what's called the flow state, okay, whether we're afraid it's Taoist or Buddhism, I'm not sure if the flow state comes from, which I believe is called Wu Wei, which I think is Taoism. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. That state is nothing that you can, you can practice by, again, not multitasking. It's a completely different world. You know, when people say I want to live like a Taoist, living like a Taoist in 2024 is not as easy as it was if you live on an island in the Philippines in 1940. I mean, just the reality of life. It's not saying the principles of Wu Wei and Taoism aren't important and mindfulness and meditation can't change your life. But this like idea of always being in the present moment and never thinking about the future is not real. It's not a real thing. It's also not healthy for most people. I own a business and I work with OCD recovery at a top level. I need to constantly be thinking about how do we move forward? How do we navigate this problem? How do we, with a hiring problem? We just had a, a hiring, firing problem in my business that we had to work on last night, literally. I have to think about the repercussions and we do say this properly. This, I, most people I meet, I know most people don't want to hear this, that are completely obsessed with presenteeism, living in the moment, mindfulness and meditation and Wu Wei are some of the most behaviorally laziest people I've ever met in my life. Not the Buddhist that you're thinking of, the way it's meant, meant today, the way, the way people talk about it right now. I want to be just chilling and do nothing and this and that. And then they're faced with a problem and they crumble because they have no life skills whatsoever. That's why I believe stoicism is above everything, in my personal opinion, with REBT principles. Again, I have to say it again. This doesn't mean I'm super against Taoism or mindfulness and meditation when it comes to the present moment, but it's not what you think. I don't have a single thought throughout the day one time about how concentrated I am on the task at hand. Sometimes I'm on a call and I'm in the zone. I am in the fucking zone. We're talking about something. Sometimes it's emergency call and maybe it's late at night and I'm in the zone, but not as much as I was in later and we're all get a little bit distracted. People get distracted on calls when they're working with me from the other angle because their OCD is so bad. So it's not as simple as just, okay, I need to be concentrated all the time. I'm going to do mindfulness meditation. I'm going to practice Taoism, presenteeism, and that is going to be my goal. Oh my God, it's not. The, no, that's not how it works. One of the ways I practice being present is to not multitask. So when I'm on the call, I'm on the call. Excuse, ooh, excuse me. When I'm making a video, I'm making a video. Ooh, when, I'm, <laughs> when I'm at the, oh my God, she kept going. When I'm at the gym, I'm, I'm at the gym. My phone's in my bag. I'm not trying to touch my phone too much unless I'm changing a song, but I'm not crazy about it. You must never touch your phone when you're in a gym. That, I used to do that, and that's a problem. When I'm driving, I'm not texting and driving, but things happen. I have to pick up my phone sometimes. I have a call. I have an emergency. Like Erica messaged me yesterday. She's like, answer the phone right now. We have a problem in the business. So I had to answer the phone. That's a little bit different. If you hold really rigid views on it, that's going to be a problem as well. But again, the belief system, shush, Daisy. <laughs> She's barking. She wants to go outside. <laughs> this is what they do at the most inopportune times. This stuff, this is a great example. Daisy just barked. I heard her downstairs. Then Milo will start barking. And then I just became unpresent in that moment and lost concentration as you just saw. This is the realities of life. That's why I always say if we had a podcast with 5 million views, there would be absolutely no retakes. There'd be no stopping. If I had to go to the bathroom, number two, it would be, hey, be right back. I'm going to the bathroom. Talk to the camera. That's the reality of life. This, this idea of all these like 20, 30, 40 takes. You know how many times I've restarted a video? Very rare. And I've made thousands of videos. And things happen all the time. Some of them come out a little bit better than others, but that's it. When I read... When I read Gucci Mane's Principles to Success, such a good book. We joke about it in the WhatsApp groups. Gucci Mane turned his whole life around, hasn't drank in years, lost 100 pounds, rapper that many people know. He would say, the reason why I'm still relevant is because I book out studio time, four hours, like four times a week, I think it was, or whatever it was. He goes, I show up, some songs suck, some are okay, and some are bangers, but I'm producing over and over and over and over and over again. That consistency will put you, that 5% consistency that no one else is doing around you is gonna put you above that. So why is my concentration and presenteeism better than most people? It's because I put myself in situations to allow it to happen, but I never expect it to happen. Okay, I'm gonna focus on this one thing. Uh, if I, and I'll have to remind myself of this because I believe it. 
you know, remember, if you're reminding yourself of your beliefs all day long, that's a problem. That's compulsive. This is why we have people dispute on paper in the beginning and then as you move throughout recovery and transition, it's a little bit different. So, but let's say I was thinking about it. Okay, when I'm on the call, I'm on the call. That's it. You could check your emails in between the calls. When you're checking your emails, you're just checking your emails. When you're doing patient notes, you're just doing patient notes. When you're reading in your bed, you're just reading in your bed. I try to put myself in situations where it's one thing at a time. But the more I try to force those things, the worse off I am. So remember, the more that you try to force the present moment, again, there's nothing wrong with mindfulness and meditation and Wu Wei and Taoism and Buddhism and all those other spiritual type philosophies. But if you're using it to say to me, oh, the present moment is the only thing that matters, I, I think that's a silly way to live from my perspective because the best problem solvers I meet are 50% here and 50% in the future as a random analogy that has no merit behind the split in the trinities. You say something like that and then people are like, well, what if it's 40, 60? It's like, we're just using it as an analogy to take everything to, so literal, you're gonna drive yourself nuts. So thank you again. Remember, Phil at OCDrecovery.com. Let me know what you think. It's always a pleasure. We can help you. Remember, no expectations or low expectations is very different than desires and goals. I have a lot of desires, I have a lot of goals, but my expectations on those desires and on those goals are very, very low to non-existent. Thank you again, Philadelphia Recovery. Hope to hear from you soon. As always, enjoy the rest of your day.